right, so the first thing you're gonna need right here to clean your e-bike and to get the chain nice and clean is this e-bike cleaner by Finish Line. They're the same company that makes the chain lube. I had to buy a new bottle because I can't find the other one. I don't know what happened to it, but this stuff right here works really good for e-bikes. I don't know what the difference is between this and the standard chain lube, but either this or white lightning is what I recommend to lube your chain. So we're gonna first clean it with this. We might clean some other parts of the e-bike with this. It says you can pretty much use it for anything. And then we'll lube the chain with this. After you get the chain clean, I recommend lubing the chain. So start here and just kind of put a drop on every link. Now you normally don't have to do the uh, cassette back here, but we're going to. But when you clean off your chain and stuff like that, these are really good. You can get a pack of these for really cheap. I'll leave a link in the description. Um, but this is just to clean bikes. So this is for your tires, chain, you got other brushes and stuff like that. Uh, they make a specialized chain cleaner if you want that as well. But we're gonna go off and ride this down the street real quick. All right, next up is the Mother's California Gold Instant Detailer. I use this stuff all the time on both my car and my motorcycle, as well as my e-bikes. But this just makes it easy to clean the frame, get all your grime and dirt off without having to use a hose. Uh, for some reason, my water is shut off at my hose, so I can't hose off my tires. But normally what I would do is just hose my tires off after I clean them, um, get any other uh, grime and grit out of there as much as possible but I think I got it pretty good with just the e-bike cleaner um, but this will go on the frame I'll just wipe it on and wipe it off and um, do the whole bike real quick get all the dust off and make it look good and that's uh, pretty much it for the cleaning Alright, next up we're going to use this handy dandy trusty spoke wrench and make sure all the spokes are tight. We may not even have to use this, but after 500 miles you should probably check your spokes just to make sure because there is so much torque, especially in the rear motor back there. Um, but this is just a cheap little spoke wrench. I know there are better, but... So basically all you want to do here is check to make sure that they're hand tight. Um, they should not be able to come off if you twist it with your fingers. If they are loose, then you want to tighten them up. Uh, occasionally, it'll only be a couple that are loose. Sometimes you can get a whole wheel that's loose. Just depends on what happens during shipment. Um, this is something you should check before you even start riding your bike, because if your spokes are loose and you break one of them, that's a bad, bad news. So the rear wheel is one that you'll want to definitely check every single spoke because the rear wheel has the most torque coming to it. So with all that torque, it does bend these spokes a little bit at times. So you just wanna make sure they're all tight. Uh, make sure 
make sure you can't loosen them with your finger. So lefty loosey, uh, twist them to the left, kind of check them. If you get one that's loose, then you'll want to tighten that. Again, you shouldn't have very many. Now, if you have a bunch loose, you may want to check and make sure your wheel is true. And what I would recommend doing on one of these bikes is flip it upside down and then turn it and see if it wobbles a lot. So far, we're pretty good. No loose spokes on this bike. And that's it. I always start at the valve stem so I know where I left off. So go to the other side, do the same thing. If you were to have to tighten them, uh, this is a 12 on the gauge. So use a 12 gauge. You can get one of these universal ones. You just basically stick it in between the spokes and then just twist and it'll tighten them. Or loosen them if you need to loosen it for any reason. All right, now the, one of the final things to do is your brakes. These are something you may or may not have to adjust on a regular basis or clean on a regular basis but if you start getting a little bit of a squeak on your brakes it's good to take a little bit of alcohol isopropyl 99% you can use uh, pretty much any isopropyl alcohol to clean them they also have uh, this brake cleaner that you can get as well but I just wipe this on here don't touch this with your bare hands but just wipe it on rotate this wheel so you can get the other side do the same thing. You want to do this to the front and back. So just wipe it all down real nice. Avoid getting your fingers on there so there's no oil. All right, that's that. Now we'll do the other side. You can see how black it is from cleaning. Now, if for any reason you're having issues with your hydraulic brakes, um, if it seems spongy or like it's depressing a lot, uh, first thing you'll want to do is just squeeze it a bunch of times and see if it tightens up. Sometimes it gets air in there. Um, if that doesn't work, then you may have to bleed your brakes. And all you really got to do is refill it. You don't have to redo the uh, liquid or anything and get it uh, empty. You can just spray more in there. It should be fine. Um, but they sell kits on Amazon for that. I'll leave a link in the description for that as well, just so that you guys are aware um, if you need it. But uh, there's a little reservoir hole at the top at the brake lever. That's where you fill it. All right, so this is the little reservoir I was talking about. Um, this holds your mineral oil for your hydraulic brakes. There's one on each side. Uh, you'll take this little screw here. I think it's a torque, torque spit to get it off. And you'll unscrew this and then your little kit that comes with it has a little bowl that sits on top of this and it just sticks in there and I think you can twist it to lock it in place. Um, but you fill that little bowl up with mineral oil, which is what you use here. And usually the kits will come with it. I'll leave a link in the description for the ones that do. But you'll fill that up and squeeze your brake lever. And basically that'll suck the mineral oil down into the system and allow you to have functioning brakes now you only want to do this if you're having issues with your brakes with it not squeezing in or feeling real spongy um, if they compress all the way to the grip then you'd probably need to add some mineral oil and bleed your brakes a little bit um, if you can squeeze this and you're closer to the grip like it should be at least an inch to an inch and a half away from the grip when you squeeze it tight um, but if you're going all the way down to the grip, then you probably need to bleed your brakes. There is a kit for that. I'll leave a link in the description. And you'll do both sides. So if your other side is the same, uh, you'll want to do both. Or if you're only having problems with one, then just do the one. If you're running those stock CST BFT tires, what I would do is go through them. Make sure you're not getting any problems with the, uh, the tread coming apart or... Um, wearing down you'll see like a purple color if you're getting down to the core uh, if you hit that you want to replace them right away uh, I have brand new tires on here so they're they're still good I don't really have to go through them but if you got the CST BST that came on the bike and they're still functioning for you um, I would highly recommend just going through and checking the whole thing make sure there's nothing wrong with them all right the next thing we're gonna use are these handlebar jacks 
Uh, they were nice enough to send me out a second set as well as some of their other accessories. But basically these go out and attach to your grips and they spread open like tripods and allow you to set your bike on the ground without damaging the display or mirrors or anything like that, any of your accessories. So these are super handy if you got an e-bike. They're really nice and compact. They magnetize together to give you a small package to throw in your bag. And these just basically uh, go into here, wrap around your handle grip, and then you just velcro them down. So I'll demonstrate that right now. All right, so you just strap these on the grips, like so. Velcro on here. Pull the other one off. There you go, there's your tripod. Do the other side. Make sure it bikes off when you're doing this so you don't accidentally whiskey throttle it. But attach it here, cinch it down, and there's your tripod. So we're gonna basically take this, roll it up, and flip it over. pretty heavy so it takes a little a little strength but wrapped up the back frame here so I don't damage anything when I flip it over. I'll just do this. Grab it here and set it down to the back. Make sure that they're on the ground flat like that. That's pretty much it. All right, on some of these Tetro hydraulic brakes, they have a cotter pin that you have to take off um, or pull out, which is right here. Um, sometimes they screw in, sometimes they just pull out their little uh, like safety pin, a paraclip type thing. So on the back here, you have a little, this is the cotter pin, it just sticks through the brake pad uh, right here in this little hole. And that holds the brake pad in place and then you got to bend this right here to secure it so when you take it off you have to go to the other side of the rim and then just bend it so it's straight and take it out that's it so you'll basically take the brake caliper off because that's how you get to the pads pull these out going to check one because I'm pretty sure that mine are good. I haven't had any problems. They don't squeak. They should have a lot of life in, left in them. Uh, my recommendation to you would be to check both just to be certain. Uh, basically you'll take that cotter pin out and then you'll come back here and just push through here and here's your brake pads right here. So these brake pads are Tektro E10.11 uh, there's some other brands like Corky that you can get as well um, But if you it'd be kind of hard to tell here, but the uh, brake pads Just Go on this little metal thing and you'll get a replacement one of these when you buy new pads, but mine are still fairly good um, I would say probably closer to a thousand miles. I'll need to replace these but I'm only at like three 300 or so right now um, so that's that's why they still look pretty good so when you replace them you'll just take these off you can use the existing metal housing for it if you need to you don't necessarily have to use the new one that comes in the package but they just sit in here like so and stay in place and then you'll take your caliper stick your brake pads back in there like so push them back in so that the there's a hole on the brake pads where your cotter pin goes in so you take your cotter pin stick it through the brake pad holes and then bend this so that they stay in place and that's that and then they go right back in place So for this, you'll just want to get them 
semi-tight and all the way. You still want them a little loose so that when you go when you go to align these, uh, you'll want to pull your lever and then twist these and tighten them up. Like so. And then make sure they're free and not touching the pads. You should be good to go. So in conclusion, e-bike repair and e-bike maintenance is fairly easy to do yourself. Just follow my simple instructions and it will really help you out to get everything done in a proper manner. Now, of course, you're going to need tools and things like that. So you could probably buy all the tools that you need for the price that it costs to take it to somewhere and get those repairs done or those maintenance things done. And you should do them on a regular basis every 250 to 500 miles, depending. So I made this video to help out people that are a little bit new to e-bikes, uh, people that need help with maintenance, that want to do it themselves, that don't necessarily want to spend that extra money to take it to a bike shop. For all the things that you see in this video, if you were to buy everything, all of the tools that you need, the cleaner, That's a little scary, but he has dump truck coming towards me. If you were to buy all the tools and the cleaners and everything in this video that I used, you would probably be still way under what it costs to take it to a bike shop and get this maintenance done. So that's one of the main reasons I made this video. Of course, Aerial Rider asked me to make this video, so um, this is to be used with any e-bike, so not necessarily just aerial rider, but just e-bikes in general. Um, e-bikes that have hydraulic brakes. Not everybody has hydraulic brakes though, so mechanical brakes are similar, and I have another maintenance video that discuss how to maintain those as well. And I'll leave a card right here and put that link in the description as well. So all product links, all tools that I've used are all in the description. If you don't see direct links, go check my Amazon shop. I have a bunch of stuff in there that you can purchase to help you along the way. They're all really good. Everything I put on my Amazon store are things that I've tested for the last three years. So I only put things on there that I really enjoy and really use all the time. And with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really do appreciate you making it this far. And if you didn't make it this far, please go down there, hit that like button. That really does help out the channel as well as leaving a comment. Any interaction to my video, whether you like, comment, or subscribe on this video helps out the channel. So I really do appreciate it. If you do hit that subscribe button, I'd really, really appreciate it if you hit that bell. That means you'll be notified anytime I upload a video or a short. And you can always see when I post things at the time that I post it. I got a lot more content coming as well as a part two to this video, which is battery maintenance and safety. I'm gonna be making a video all about that. That's gonna be a separate video from this. So if you're interested in that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you're interested in an e-bike, you haven't purchased one yet, Aerial Rider makes some of the best. I'm getting the Grizzly this week, I believe. So I'll have all three models to show you. Uh, if you want to see all three models, please be sure to hit that subscribe button. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.